All right, everyone, Trump and DeSantis having a meeting in Miami, and it looks like DeSantis is going to be an official campaign proxy. He's going to be stumping for Trump, which is rather important. Number one, he has strong support in Florida, and you know, Florida's no longer really a swing. It's, it's leaning red now, but it's technically still in play. Like, it's one of those states that they poll it, but only occasionally. So it's not Michigan or Wisconsin or something like that. But, again, if the polls were to shift, it is technically an in-play state. I just think not really in play. DeSantis also has a considerable amount of support in other states, too. If I were Trump, I would ask him to go to places like Michigan and Wisconsin, where he can get, especially in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, certain cities up there have been hit hard by the migrant crisis. What did Ron DeSantis do? He flew in a bunch of people to Martha's Vineyard. He can, by the way, kill two birds with one stone. He'd be very effective at propping up Donald Trump on one end. He's definitely, that's, a, that's part of Trump's A-list of campaign surrogates now, I suppose. Uh, and number two, he can also set up for his own political career. Because he can remind people, you know, when he's up on stage at the, the MAGA rally... And say he can also sprinkle it with some of the things that he did. Especially pairing that with the migrant crisis and the war against wokeness, I think would hit the right tone with a lot of voters, uh, including a lot of independent voters. And keep in mind, there were a lot of people that wanted uh, Ron DeSantis to be the presidential nominee. There are still some people that are holding out on Trump. If Ron DeSantis is appearing on stage with Trump regularly, it really helps Trump and it also really helps DeSantis. It, it would help heal the... Uh, the, the wounds between the two of them after what was sometimes a really nasty primary for a while, um, in which Ron DeSantis got my praise for, you know, stumping Nikki Haley in Iowa, and uh, I thought that that was wonderful. And then he had the sense to drop out quickly um, and not proceed forth like Haley did in her doomed campaign, where she won exactly one state plus D.C. She wins the two most liberal enclaves on, in the east of the Mississippi. Yeah, she's totally a principled conservative candidate. Ron DeSantis fared a lot better, and in the end had more support anyway. He was the only one who was ever kind of up there within reach of Trump, and it petered out because of certain bad campaign decisions, mainly by his campaign manager, admittedly. Uh, but he did fairly well. Uh, the thing is, it will appear odd to people at first. If they're like up on stage and they shake each other's hands and Ron's like, oh yeah, here's the future president of the United States, a great guy. It's going to be a little bit on the nose at first. But you'll remember there's a precedent for this. And for the TDS holdouts to say, well, this is, is bullshit, you know, they hate each other. And secretly, Ron DeSantis still does. Look at Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz is now on the edge of core MAGA. He's like on the, uh, in, uh, the middle ring of MAGA. Well, Donald Trump literally insulted his wife at one point. And Ted Cruz was not really happy about this. In fact, that went a little bit far for me, actually, because, like, eh, she's not running for office. Eh, you know, come on. <laughs> Donald, it's, you're supposed to make mean tweets, but there are certain things that eh, they step over the line a little bit. Hammer your opponent. Why don't you call Ron DeSantis ugly or something like that? He did talk about his height at several points. But this is what happens within politics. People take it more seriously than the politicians often do. You're going to say whatever you want in order to win that primary cycle. While I think there might be some grudge between Trump and DeSantis, Trump against DeSantis for staying in despite not being able to win, although really he aimed that more at Haley because she stuck it out until the suicidal end of her campaign, <coughs> and DeSantis towards Trump um, probably for, for a number of low blows against him and his campaign. But they're capable of making amends and forming a relatively powerful business relationship effectively. I still don't think that DeSantis is likely to be offered and or accept a role within Trump's incoming White House. Um, number one, he's busy doing, busy doing the governor thing. And number two, I, I think he probably wouldn't want to work for Trump, nor would Trump want to have an employee like DeSantis. DeSantis is reasonably well-spoken and tends to be a rather energetic candidate. Yes, sometimes he gets a little derpy, but he is a good public speaker. And so Trump doesn't want another strong, powerful man in the room, basically. Uh, it, it's just his style. If there's going to be someone charismatic aboard his, his cabinet, they'll be female. We saw this with his first cabinet inception. Um, my hope is that he has better hiring practices for some positions in round two than in round one. 
Um, there seems to be some positive, some optimistic signs about that. He may have learned his lesson. Hey, I can't actually appease the neocons enough through a few cabinet hirings to actually get them to want to pony up a tiny proportion of the money we're sending to other countries for the wall. Thankfully, there's now a federal court legal precedent allowing him to dip into discretionary spending. They'll probably try to throttle that back as well. Probably try to pass some stupid bill. The president shall not allocate uh, discretionary funding uh, for national defense purposes for national defense purposes. That's probably what they'll try to do. They'll try to tighten the purse strings on him. Um, Trump, going forward, has a big advantage. Having DeSantis visibly backing him gives him an additional advantage. There are still, I've seen some of them, there are still holdouts that back DeSantis who are convinced that Trump can't win. DeSantis will have the uh, perhaps thankless task of trying to woo that small holdout vote back aboard the Trump train. If he's successful at that, and there's no reason to believe that he won't be because, you know, he's their guy, and he can, with a wink and a nudge, say basically, elect Donald, yeah, he's, he's going to be the big kahuna now. Don't worry, I'll be back in four years. Don't worry yourselves, I'm still young. He's in his 40s, I think. Uh, I got plenty of time. We'll do round two uh, in 2028, so, you know, stand by and stand down, basically. That's what Ron DeSantis can do. Yeah, he can advance his own career and ensure that Trump wins. Uh, I mean, you don't need that many more votes to, uh, uh, beyond what Trump already has, to imagine a scenario where there's not enough ballot printers to override the public will. He could even end up winning the popular vote. I don't think that you'll end up with VP Ron DeSantis. Um, I, I think that he'll just go back to state politics after, but he knows that by backing Trump, if Trump wins, he also gets potentially Trump's endorsement the next time around. This is endorsement catering as much as it is a, recipro a reciprocal relationship in the here and now. And so that's my analysis of that. Uh, it's interesting, though, to people who think that uh, Trump and DeSantis genuinely hate one another. They don't hate one another. They have a grudge against one another. That doesn't mean they're not capable of working together for very, very mutual reasons. That's about all. Peace out.